Uh, Hello and welcome. Uh, Here is Heidi from the Wisdom Factory. Hmm. Oh, here you are. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the Queen, <laughs> she appeared and disappeared, our guest for today, where we want to talk about uh, men and women in this situation of today. So before we go into the topic, tell us a little bit about you. Okay, um, so my name is Quinn Yang. I am a, a fifth year PhD student uh, studying developmental psychology, specifically about human motivation and the socialization of value. And um, I have been uh, intensely interested in Ken Wilber's work since I think when I was 15. Um, mm. So it has been a decade. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so personally, um, regarding the community, I'm interested in anything psychological, like any topic about human development um, and Wilbur theory, everything. Although I'm, I probably have expertise in the, you know, the, the individual quadrants. I'm not so familiar with like the social collective um, aspect of the human consciousness. Um, and another topic that I'm intensely interested in is uh, male-female dynamic, um, because I feel like the whole society, myself included, is trying to find a solution to end the fight between men and women and actually find a way that's win-win, that can actually nurture both divine femininity and divine masculinity. Like they, yeah, it, it's not like one trumping the other anymore. I feel like that's the way to go, but I don't know the actual solution. So I'm very interested in getting perspectives from different people, both men and women, to see if we can find a better way. Okay, that's a very good t topic. I'm very much interested in that. My whole life I was trying to find different relationships and I noticed uh, that I normally repeated the same old thing. <laughs> So, you know, from being a, a feminist, like, you know, no, no, the men are all bad and women are superior and to, yeah. you know, uh, I, I realize that's not the right way. So I'm yeah. interested in, in what you are uh, doing. So mm -hmm. what is your, how did you get interested? First in developmental <laughs> psychology, how did you meet Ken Wilber with 15? That's really, really... Oh, yeah. I did not meet him. I just read his book. Yeah, yeah, okay. But meet the thoughts yeah. of him. But because yeah. normally people with 15 have all other things to do and not read uh, yeah. Ken Wilber, no? <laughs> so how did you get there? Do you want, oh, you want me to answer Ken Wilber first? Yeah, maybe? How, how you want. Okay. It, it's completely coincidental in the sense that my mother, uh, she studies uh, Western philosophy like John Dewey, and then uh, she was, uh, there is a scholar called uh, Hui Meng in China mm -hmm. who translated a, a, um, a lot of Wilbur's books, and she's the one that introduced Wilbur into China. Oh, great. And then my mom was reading, like, one of her uh, translated books, um, which is Grace and Grit. Uh -huh. And so, you know, teenage girls like to read romance. And I kind of read Grace and Grit, like a romance. Yeah. Yeah, that's And that, that's kind of like, yeah. For many people, this and is the first book, no? To, to meet and get caught into the honesty and the struggle of these people, you know? And that's for me, yeah. it was the second book. Uh, the first one was No yeah. Boundaries uh, uh, about mm -hmm. um, psychotherapies, you know? And then Grace and mm -hmm. Grit, and it made me cry. And actually, mm -hmm. I gave it to a friend. She was suicidal. And she yeah. read this, and she was cured. She said, oh, my problems, <laughs> they are not really to end my life for, you know? So it has uh, already had this wonderful transmission. OK, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um... But at that time, I didn't really understand like the deeper philosophical thoughts of Wilbur. I think I wasn't able to comprehend it. Um, and coincidentally, I became just personally 
the very interesting Maslow's hierarchy of need theory. Um, uh, uh, now I remember. It's also because my mom had a book. <laughs> Can you explain and, what that is? Can you say what that is? Yeah. So um, Maslow's hierarchy of need theory um, depicts the different levels of human needs. Um, with the most basic level as physiological needs for survival, and then safety, and then um, belongingness and love, and then self-esteem, and then self-actualization. And Wilbur's way of explaining his model, I think, is the best way, which is every single higher level transcends and includes the lower level. Mm -hmm. So... In Wilbur's, I think, in his integrated model, like um, needs development, this hierarchy is one line among the multiple lines of development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you were interested in that, and then what happened? And then, uh, and then I was also growing up. Um, my mom was uh, a philosopher, uh, but my main question. <laughs> against uh, her perspective on things is that how do you know it's true? Mm. Like you make so many assumptions about humanity, you can't test them. Um, little did I know that that's actually a psychological perspective, like using empirical methods to test humanity, assumptions about humanity. So I got into psychology and later I decided to pursue the thing in psychology that interests me the most which is human motivation, including Maslow's hierarchy of need theory. So that's why I decided to study um, like this uh, specific division in my graduate school. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And now you are using your knowledge about these things and you bring it to the topic men and women. I mean, I can imagine my generation, you know, we were still going up in the traditional mindset, let's say, you know, and then we try to break out and become green, at least, you know, somehow green. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. your generation starts at a different, at a different point. And mm -hmm. you have already feminism in all its different states. You already have mm -hmm. uh, that um, at your disposition. And Mm -hmm. At the beginning, feminism was really, we, they did a lot, you know, we, we gained a lot at the beginning. And uh, mm -hmm. I have many friends who were active feminists in the, in the 60s, 70s. So. But um, then, at least to me, the development of feminism seemed to be a little strange, let's say, you know. So you, you know all that, um, you know, you are, let's say, a child of this development. Tell me a little bit what you... What do you think about this feminine, yeah. feminism heritage? <laughs> yeah, glad I'm back. <laughs> yeah. So feminism, <laughs> I'm also a, a, a student of another spiritual teacher called uh, Til Swan. Mm -hmm. She's kind of a controversial figure. And I completely agree with her that um, she said the number one obstacle for men towards enlightenment is um, um, disassociation and disconnection. Mm -hmm. But for women, it's manipulation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's true because under, um, it's true suppression happened for women. And what women did was that instead of gaining and using their own power to meet their needs, they had to meet their needs through men. So they had to manipulate men in order to do that. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the number one gift in feminism movement is that women are um, retrieving their own sense of power and recognizing their own ability to meet their own needs. I think yeah. that's the biggest gift uh, in feminism. But, but I think the sad truth about feminism is that it's, a, it's an attempt towards independence completely. Mm -hmm. It's trying to overwrite the interdependent nature of, uh, between men and women. And it becomes uh, sometimes uh, female supremacy. And women trying to um, 
disempower men. Exactly. So that's fight. the shadow. They fight yeah. against men and think they're superior and men are really, mm, yeah. You know, that's, they are sort of doing the same thing, which, which was before yeah. on the other way around. While men exactly. really are dependent on women in a different way as women are. Yeah. You know, when women yeah. have gained the possibility to nurture, nurture to feed themselves, then, yeah. uh, you know, the men still are in dependence, in sexual dependence. Mm -hmm. Effect, effective, you know, they, they need the, the love and they need the support more by women in this um, movement towards freedom, they have sort of suppressed these needs, you know, and see it yeah. as a fight against um, the other because the other is the bad one, you know, so that's yeah. definitely not healthy, you know. Yeah. And, um, and I, because in my family, like um, the Chinese society is transitioning to maybe a little few years behind the Western society, but it's catching up to feminism. <laughs> um, in the sense that my mother, um, in my family, my mother and my aunt, um, they are the two very, very strong and independent and successful women. Both of them divorced. They were the only women that were divorced in the family. All the other women were super traditional and dependent on the men. Um, I don't know which one comes first, like the divorce or the feminism, but like they coincide. And these are the two women, the only two women in my family um, that have a reproductive system related to cancer or tumors. So I've read a lot yeah. And I read a lot about this, and it makes me sad because women who suppress their own needs are in such suffering. They yeah. feel unsupported, they feel unloved, and it's just very sad. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, let's say, the shadow side of what we want to achieve, that we are often going against our inner needs, our even our inner knowing, because we try, and that's the fatal thing, in my opinion, we try to be like men. And this is going uh, against our own nature. And then the conflicts yeah. arise and cancer is often a sign of, of, you know, of conflict, inner conflict, I mean, of inner processes. <laughs> yeah. And I do think, you know, in many ways, women who are happy in the traditional state, mm -hmm. they are happier than the others mm -hmm. who know the individualization path and want to become something. And we don't even know what we want to become because we don't have a role models. No? So we just go and, and try, we try it out to become men. And this has mm -hmm. a limit. And I think what I have intuited of what you are, trying to do or doing is to to change the route to tr change the direction of for women in in their growing up in their development not fighting against or becoming men you know that's often the same thing no when you fight against something when you clearly don't like it that has to do with you so yeah. perfect yeah <laughs> so okay. how would that be what is your idea? I don't have an ultimate answer, but I think, uh, again, uh, relating it to Wilbur theory, I feel like these are two fragments or extremes of um, the consciousness development of men and women. So one is traditional, one is modern rebellion. And how do we marry them? Like, how do we integrate them? I, I feel like that's the way to go. Um, I don't know the, the um, exact answer, but I think it has to do with integrating your internal fragmentation first for women to realize that both are simultaneously your needs. Like your, you have a need to have an individual sense of value and independence and the capability to leave something that's not good for you. 
And you also have the need to experience um, being supported, being nurtured, and being like a small woman for one. And how do you integrate these two fragments within yourself? I think mm -hmm. it starts from there. Yeah. 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 I think it, it starts also from the recognition that we have never really um, valued ourselves. We have taken over the, the image that society is, um, you know, that men are up there and we are down there. And out of this, we have uh, a psychological uh, way of feeling ourselves not enough not valuable enough, you know, because, mm. you know, when you are dependent on, on men, if, even if it's nice, but th there is always the feeling, I cannot make it alone, I'm not enough. And I think that's for a long time, at least in the Western world, but as I hear also in Asia and in, in, in Africa, everywhere, you know, because the, that's the patriarchy is a long time and all over the world. So we, we in some way have misinterpreted the way of living as some that we don't have worth, that we have not worth enough. And I think we have first to realize that, that it is still operating in us. And it's also um, not really, how can I say, it's not thinkable that you can overcome that in 50 years. And it is going for 20, 30, I don't know how many generations. And then from this point, doing the self-healing work, work, that's my, my mm. opinion, you know. What, what mm. do you think? Where, where, where would you start with that? You're, as I said, you are a different generation. Maybe you have already more confidence than our generation said. <laughs> um, Mark, um, I just thought of uh, one important thing as uh, we were talking as uh, <laughs> Wilbur's idea again. Uh, in that it should be an integral social change. It, 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 it's not just individual and internal. And because the external suppression, like the equal pay is still a problem. And there are a lot of structural changes that need to happen for women to actually feel like we're equal. So I feel like it's like a all quadrant uh, shift or movement. But individually you, we can take ownership for the internal work yeah i yeah. do think if uh, if you are confident about yourself and what you can offer you would go into negotiations for money for payment in a different way and women have a little bit this this attitude yeah yeah i i i get what you i don't fight for what i get paid you know while uh, men are clear <laughs> No? They even fake uh, their capacities, and it's not. Mm. And we are more ah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> he really wants out. Can I? Can I let him out? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> okay. We have been yelling. Excuse me. Okay. Now we are back. Oh. <laughs> okay. It, we talked about the the gap in payment. And I was saying um, about the responsibility of women to, for they also play a part why they get paid less. Because when you are too um, agreeable and then yeah. there is a boss and says, oh yeah, you get this and you, you oh, what can I do better? I get this and then nothing. And you don't have the, the attitude to say, that's me, I can, I merit this, and if you don't give it to me, I go. You know, men are better often in playing this game than women. So my idea is when we would be more confident and more self-worth recognizing, then probably we would also get more money for the same work. That's my idea. So now I ask you what, what you think about that and what are your ideas? I think the women who are trying to push the movement in, in terms of the social structure, like the collective objective quadrant, they're the ones that suffered 
the biggest consequences for that because they're the ones that were perceived as least feminine. So simultaneously, I greatly appreciate what they do. Like what they do is crucial. Like we need fighters. Um, and I feel like the part of me feels like this approach that I'm taking to do internal work is the easiest route. And it yields the greatest benefit because men like that. <laughs> men like to see a woman who's integrated, both feminine and be able to stand up for herself. I, I feel like maybe I don't have the courage to fight the fight, so to speak, in society, but I, I greatly appreciate their efforts. Yeah. And you know, it might also be dependent on the type, on typology. No, you're maybe not the fighter type. I'm not. So. You know, and other people like to fight, so that's fine. So that they do it. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what is your idea about how to heal? To heal this on an individual level, oh, wherever in all quadrants. Go, go. You can do the round if you want. <laughs> I think uh, I my perspective is very limited. Like I, I'm mostly focused on individual psychological, and also I'm a woman. So I'm mostly familiar with explorations on how probably women can heal this within themselves. So t to me, I feel like the the number one step is to come to an authentic awareness of the deficits of, feminine, of feminism and traditional femininity too. Like, I feel like feminism is probably one level above the traditional femin feminine perspective. And then like Wilbur says, like every, all consciousness development comes with the conscious awareness of the deficits of that level. But that's what he said about, I think, um, like he spoke on mindfulness, mm -hmm. mindfulness meditation to grow up and what is it? Grow up and wake up. Mm -hmm. And clean so up. I feel like, yes. <laughs> so I think for many feminists, uh, the first step is to realize this segment within yourself that actually wants containment, wants support wants to be able to say, I let go and I want to be led. Like it's such it's such a beautiful feeling when I embraced it. And I feel like that's the traditional feminine part that needs to be integrated. Yes. You recognize it as the first step. Yeah. And then the second step second step is to find a way to marry both without sacrificing the integrity of either. Mm-hmm. But that's something that I'm trying to do. I don't know the solution to that yet. Yeah. You are talking about the manipulation. What I'm uh, noticing that many women try to tell their men how they have to be and they want to be equal and everything and they don't yeah. realize how much they are still manipulating. I think when we want uh, equality, we need also to give up manipulation, you know, and it, it's still not really, people don't, don't see it in themselves, you know. When I noticed it, I was really <gasps> shocked when I, <laughs> when I came to the bottom of that and I, I saw, oh, how much was I manipulative, you know, and, but it's, healthy because otherwise you cannot pretend that the others uh, change and you don't. <laughs> Can you expand on that? Like what manipulation looks like? Manipulation? I mean men do that too but women are masters in it. To get the other person yeah. to do what I want. You, you want? Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
by you know in the indirect way yeah also the the classical thing is sex you know to be sexy and yeah. by offering sex then uh, or holding back sex so you can manipulate yeah. the man that's the classic but it doesn't need to be sex it can be all other sorts of things behaviors or or you know emotions yeah 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 so we we need to see that as women and i don't hear that i never I never hear that in the in the feminist circles to talk about this. And you know, when there was the Me Too movement, I find it very important yeah. that these things come out. But I never heard yeah. about the role of the women in these uh, in these encounters. You know, it's not only the bad yeah. men; it's always interaction. And you have the possibility yeah. to say no. Normally, it might be that then you get raped. Okay, when you cannot say no anymore. But it, I think in most of yeah. these cases you mm -hmm. would have had the possibility. But if you thought as an actor, you get then the good role when you do this, you know, that's, that's your responsibility, the decision. And I never heard that in the, in the talks about, uh, about uh, Me Too. And um, Diane Marsh uh, Hamilton, you know her? Yeah, she, uh, I'm not familiar with her. Uh, she is very in the integral circles. She is a Zen teacher. And um, she said in one of these conversations, she said, to come to this insight of your own real participation mm -hmm. in the problem, that's practically, mm -hmm. you need to have already an integral awareness. And I said, ah, that's why I never land with anybody when I talk about that, <laughs> you know? They think I would support <laughs> the, the man when I say that, and I would approve what they are doing. I say, no, it's not yeah. that. Yeah, 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 you know, this this <laughs> this reminds me of, of the pre-trans fallacy that mm -hmm. we'll talk about. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And how can we support these ideas to come into into the world without being accused of negating the fact and you know supporting the the bad guys? <laughs> I, I thought about this a lot too. Um, and I realized that maybe there is value because there is traditional and then there is feminist and there is an integrated perspective. Even though there are individuals um, that have reached this integrated consciousness, it's, the fact is that the social structure has not reached the second phase yet. So I feel like it's risky for the society to reach for the third level. And maybe it's more safe for them to focus on feminism at this point and make sure that this level is securely um, developed. And then we can go to the integrated level. Mm -hmm. But still, um, I think there needs to be a lot of shadow work done because we, yeah. we, we want to do healthy levels. We want to reach healthy levels and not, um, not uh, unhealthy ones. Because you know the, the problem, at the beginning of feminism, sure, that was something new. And so they were sort of uh, negated and, and, and diminished and, and, uh, and blamed and whatever. But this is long time ago. Um, then in later times, this, people were already more open, you know, in the 60s, people were open and listened to the, to the women. And there were many men supporting that because they realized that, uh, yeah, it is a, a societal problem. It's not about a man or a woman, but it's about how the, the structure is, no? And uh, mm -hmm. then it became, as we were saying, like a fight against and uh, mm -hmm. polarity increased yeah. and now yeah. how can we bring that together and for me uh, as Ken Wilber says clean up shadow work look what you are doing okay. look uh, as an individual and also in groups and society not only go out mm -hmm. on us we have the right to blah 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 but look a little mm -hmm. bit on uh, what is behind all that that's my idea what is yours <laughs> No, I want to ask you because there are so many modalities for shadow work. Um, so what's the ones that you think are most effective? 
first of all, I, I did uh, psychotherapy because I, mm -hmm. my, my life went with men and always a failure because I never found the right one. You could say that, but it's not that. I, I did my own thing. And uh, that was the first step to open, to open the awareness, you know, to go away from, um, I found the wrong one and this is uh, all his fault. And to begin to realize, now, yeah, maybe there is something in you which is collaborating with that. And then what I did about 10 years ago, I did a coaching training in feminine power. And that was the, the time that was very intensive for three years. I studied that, which I then I really liked it and uh, incorporated it in my being. And this was really opening my, my mind, you know, and my feelings also. And I realized how much I did to men which I never thought about before, you know. <laughs> I was days of crying, you know, <laughs> because that, yeah. how could I do that? But you know, you know that um, you you no, don't normally do that because you are a bad person, but because of your level of consciousness and of the surroundings, what is considered right or wrong, and so. That for me were the, the most uh, important uh, moments of realizing it. But I think mm -hmm. uh, psychotherapy or coaching with somebody who is already in a higher level, that would be a good idea. So, so how could you find that person? Try out. Try out. See what, when you, when you utter these things uh, which are important to you, if they try to calm you down or give you theoretical explanations or something to keep you in a certain yeah. box, or if they are going to explore with you what's on the bottom of these things and also confront you with your own shortcomings, you know. So I think yeah. then you can do it. So you are studying uh, psycho. Um, Developmental psychology. Uh, what what is the response there? Um, so basically, I study human motivation. Oh, last year again. Yeah, that happens all the time. So we have yeah. to live with that. You yeah, and back. Okay. <laughs> Human motivation. The motivation when we go to feminism is to become peers or equal or what because we don't really yeah. want to, to get equal what is the motivation <laughs> um there's so many motivational theories and um i think that the one that uh, the, the theory that i use to do my research empirical work is the theory uh, called expectancy value theory by jackie eccles and so she made a, a very interesting distinction between can I do it and do I want it? Mm -hmm. She's basically saying these are the two basic fun, uh, components of human motivation. So I think um, if we relate that to uh, female manipulation, uh, it's very often the women want something, but they don't think that they can get it. Mm -hmm. So they have to manipulate mm -hmm. into that. So the feminist movement is telling women that you can get what you want. So it's this compatibility, uh, competence quadrant level, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, going back into my life, to become uh, equal, equal to my elder yeah. brothers, I try to do things because I can, but it was not really because mm -hmm. I wanted, just to, to fight, you know, to, to, to in the external uh, quadrants to be, uh, the same, treated the same, but then I fought for things which really were not good for me. So that's, yeah. you, you said, can I do it? Uh, do I want it? In yeah. this case, I can do it, but I actually yeah. better shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your personal experience with that? Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I just thought of another motivational theory, which is called uh, the self-determination theory, which is actually uh, very similar to Maslow's theory. 
It just adds like an autonomy need as uh, one of the psychological needs in addition to belongingness and uh, self-esteem that Maxwell mm -hmm. proposed. Mm -hmm. But um, I think um, th what human usually experiences is a uh, knee conflict, mm -hmm. namely that we have all these needs. We have a need for competence. Mm -hmm. We have a need for love. We have a need for autonomy of freedom. It's the, the problem is that it's very difficult for us to simultaneously satisfy them. So like before, in traditional femi femininity, we sacrifice self-esteem need for belongingness. And then in feminist movement, we sacrifice belongingness for self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So how do we marry them? How do you marry yeah. that in in your life? No, I don't how, know. How are you? <laughs> how are you? How is your your way of being with men? I mean, uh, what feel in this? Uh, how do you treat men? How are you treated? And uh, how is it going? Me? Mm -hmm. You, exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Filling life okay. into theories, okay? <laughs> All right. So I'll be honest. Um, uh, I think in my... Okay, okay. Vulnerability moment. Oh. Okay. So uh, I have to start with my childhood. Uh, specifically, I had a very abusive father. Uh, abusive and unavailable and a mother who's like a saint who supported us when she received no support and who stay with this man who's abusive to her and her children <clears throat> and basically it's the dynamic with my father was the villain she's the victim mm -hmm. and then she's the saint you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and while I while after they divorced um, what I realized was that I was becoming the villain in her life. Ah, okay. So then I realized that, oh, there, there is a dynamic that she is involved in. Like she needs to be the victim and she needs to kind of guilt trap the other person as the villain. And that's classic manipulation. But what's interesting is that after that awareness, that happened probably like seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. When I, I was afraid of relationship till 27 because I just saw like how bad it could go and how much depression women can experience. And after I started to open up to dating, even after I had the awareness of the manipulation that women usually do, I fell into the same trap. Like I sign up for men who are unavailable who cannot intrinsically by being who they are, they cannot meet my needs. And then I play the victim. Mm -hmm. I blame them and I try to manipulate them so that they can meet my needs. And asking them to change who they are. So in the end, it's, it's, it's like, I feel like the whole relationship lasted because of my inauthenticity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually probably like I take I'm the one who's really responsible for this failure because it couldn't have started without me playing the victim and not meeting my own needs. This is really great that you have this awareness and, and don't blame yourself for that because it's normal that we fall into the same patterns. But the awareness is is great and that's the starting point, no? And mm -hmm. it might happen again. And then, but I, in my life, I found the mm -hmm. more I got aware, the shorter these yeah. relationships became, you know? And at the end, I could choose when I realized, oh, that's going the same way. I, I better stop, you know? So, and I have to say at the, at the last, my last partner who unfortunately died, uh, that was the, the first one where I thought, oh, that's it. <laughs> You know, that's the first man who I could really trust and where I felt mm -hmm. loved and where I felt um, respected and, and supported, 
supported. I mm. never had partners before who supported me, you know. Mm. But that's, I, I choose them and I was so, yeah, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to yeah, say yeah. you are you are young and it will happen probably again, but you will have no. you ha no don't 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 it will because these are patterns which are so in the blood. But as soon you as you 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 will see the signs earlier, and you will mm. be uh, will be able to be more authentic for, to yourself towards yourself, and realize it, and then have the choice what to do, you know either try out another pattern of yours and see if this is possible or leave the relationship you know that's it's a learning it's just a learning which we have to do and with that you serve to all women you know because as you know ken wilber says no the grooves no the cosmic grooves the more people reach uh, this goal of self-awareness and trying out to to get out of the old patterns the easier it is for the next ones. So what the work you are doing and will be doing, this is helpful for, for other women. So that was for me the big motivation to be able to even uh, occupy myself with myself, that I didn't do mm -hmm. it for egocentrism, not only at least, but uh, for, for also being useful to the energetic field of, of women, you know, to open up some possibility, to help to open up some possibility for change in women. So don't be afraid. You will do your path and you will struggle and then fail and then try again and fail and try again, but always with this, you know, awareness and that's, that's it. That's life. <laughs> now I'm doing <laughs> motivation for you. <laughs> It was intended an interview, but I feel like, like wanting to tell you my life experience. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I wonder if you want still to, to give your, your, how can I say, your ideas to women who are listening to us. Mine, I have given enough. So it's the last few minutes. Uh, Tell me about you. I mean, what you want to bring out? What message do you want to bring out? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a solution. I'm not ready yet to give advice. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not about advice. It's more about where, where, where are you going, you know? And you know about the feminine way. The feminine way is not to find a solution and go there. But the feminine way is just go. And something, <laughs> partial solutions will appear, you know, and we will never yeah. arrive at one solution. Then it's already, let's say, a dictatorship, you know. There are probably many ways to reach a goal. But solution, it seems for me, the word, you know, seems more too technical so go on the path and and i say it to everybody just go and be open be open and mm -hmm. look what what you can include in your path and every failure i tell you brings you further because if everything goes right away well you have no motivation you are studying motivation uh, to to learn new things you know you get lazy sort of <laughs> That's my, my, let's say, conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Wonderful. Um, so I, and I, I think also, mm -hmm. please. Okay, say, you think? So I, I also uh, think it's important. I mean, experience is like collecting data mm -hmm. in a sense. And it's also important to compile the data and then learn from the data. Exactly. So I think getting into relationships is important, but you really need to take some time to reflect and learn from the relationship instead of like rebound into the similar pattern. 
Exactly. And also when you go in a new relationship, be aware of your expectations, you know, and your, your ideas, how you could reach that. So um, be very, very, very clear with yourself and then mm. be open to what happens. That's all. We don't have to, to keep the men a- anymore because we cannot survive without them, you know? So we don't have this need anymore. So we can be open to, to what develops and we can also say, okay, that's enough and I can go. So, you know, so I wish you very good luck and uh, a wonderful relationship and good studies and transmission into your life, into your own life. Okay. Thank you, so Thank much, you very much. <laughs> Ciao.